Every time I step to the microphone, I put my soul on two-inch reels that I don't even own. I remember the first time hearing that song, that album, Lab Cabin, California, when it came out. I remember driving in my Suzu Amigo, and I remember hearing those words. And, I mean, I've been a Farside fan since before that and to this day. And I remember hearing something different there. And, and it, it really made me think. I remember their first album, Lab Cabin. No, Bizarre Ride. Um, was this celebration of joy and excitement. Sort of the... The, um, the rush of success happening, of, of getting a deal, of knowing your art is going to be heard or seen by a large audience, that you got your break. And that album had that energy in it. And then I remember Lab Cabin... It, it had the, like, the come down from that was what I got from Lab Cabin. It's very soulful, very introspective, and really honest about so many things in their lives. Um, and it, uh, it really, it hit me on a visceral level, like good music always does, but it hit me on a personal level too. I felt it. And, and it, it really resonated with me. But that line got me thinking. Every time I step to the microphone, I put my soul on two-inch reels that I don't even own. What was once exciting had now become a, a feeling of imprisonment was my perception. And it got me thinking, because at the time, I was trying to launch my career as an artist and I've always felt very protective of my art it's something very sacred to me and I, I had vision I had voice and there came a time where that dream of working for Marvel Comics and DC Comics was all that mattered and then I got in there and, I, and I, like I, I had my bizarre ride moment of like, here I am, I've done it, uh, this is it, my break. And then I remember, and this is fairly, well, I, I remember, I probably started feeling this way before I admitted it to myself, but it was a good two years ago where I really fully admitted it to myself where that's exactly what I was feeling. I wasn't enjoying the work. I felt trapped by the work. I was doing what I had to do to get it done so I could get a paycheck. Um, I still was pouring myself into my work. It, there was never a point where I was drawing something I didn't, where I was like, I don't care. I did care and I cared too much. And it was for stuff I didn't know. And it, it really, you know, two years ago when that kind of hit me, I was like, all right, it's time to stop that. And that, that's a hard thing to admit, and that's a scary place to be, to walk away from a dream. 
but what you realize is or what I realized is the dream is ever growing and you dream and you work towards something and then when you get there and you're doing it as you're doing it it becomes normal and then you start to see the downsides or the flaws or or just the rush of it doing it or the repetitive nature of doing it all starts to uh, chip away at the patina of that dream and um, it made me realize I have to be uh, I have to answer to myself I have to be fully independent how do I do that and that's where I am and why am I talking about this right now welcome to the ink pulp podcast I'm your host Sean Crystal and I have a reason talking about this because today I have on two uh, artist friends who are also part of Essential Sequential, which is Jason Schachter's crew of artists who, uh, uh, he's our art rep. He sells our original artwork, organizes our convention appearances, does a lot of amazing things, and and uh, we're all part of this business of his. So today I have on two friends from that group. I have Eric Kennedy, who you've seen on my podcast before. You've heard of my podcast before. Eric is responsible for this podcast existing in a lot of ways. And today I've also got Rod Reese. Now Rod is a Brazilian artist who joined the group fairly recently in the last couple years, I believe. Rod, I apologize if if I'm off on that, but going on my memory here and sometimes it's a little foggy um but i think i'm i I got a solid fucking trap up here i got a good memory probably about two years ago maybe a little more but not much i'm on that uh but rod came in the group and uh, when i first met him he came up to me he was a big fan of my original podcast ink pulp audio and he, he was a real big fan so he'd always wanted to be on and i wanted to have him on and um, then COVID hit, and we talk about it a lot. He, he dealt with some pretty serious stuff. But he used to have a podcast of his own. In fact, he had several podcasts, and we talk about that. But COVID hit him and his family pretty hard. Uh, we talk about that. Um, and uh, so Rod, he's just a fan of the podcast, which was cool. So I did want to have him on. He invited me on to his Instagram Live, and we talked. And during that talk, we kind of got on this this talk. Like He's working for Marvel right now, and he's very excited, as he should be. And he was talking to another Brazilian artist. And they were talking about other artists working for Marvel who, who seem like, I don't know if bitter is the word, or, or unhappy. And... Um, they were like, you know, you, you get into bed with Marvel understanding these things, understanding that they're going to put you on a tight schedule, understanding that they're probably not paying you what, you, what you're worth uh, for most people, uh, understanding a lot of this stuff. And they're like, so you just accept that and you'll be happy working for them. Well, I accepted that at first and, and then I, I wasn't happy I'm not cool with that that shit's not cool to me I'm the type of person if I'm working for someone it's what happened to me at art school it's what happened to me in jobs throughout my life when you start to see the shit that's going on I'm the type of person to speak up and not like I fight for change I want to see better I want to see you do better not just for me but for all my artist compadres uh, so we kind of got in that uh, had that talk and I felt like I sounded like a real bitter asshole but I don't like the way Marvel and DC are operating and treating their talent these days I don't now you've got your upper class at Marvel and DC are treated just fine but the majority of the workers the freelancers uh, the middle class say I don't think they're treated fairly so I, I'm out care with so but when the topic comes up I'm like I don't buy that that uh well you just accept it and find happiness and then fuck that they're a corporation they're making a killing on the backs of all these people it's not right I- I'm, I'm gonna step away and I'm gonna speak up so we kind of talked about that and when it ended I was like shit I-, I sounded like a like an angry fucker and um I said look let's continue this conversation on my podcast 
and we talk about it here. And, and I tried to keep my emotion down a little bit, but look, I, it's an emotional subject for me. Um, so it's hard. I'm a passionate dude. <laughs> I got passion in me, and my artwork is important to me. But so I'm moving in my direction, and I'm very fucking happy about that. And all the shit at Marvel that kind of pushed me away from that, you know, now in hindsight, was the universe saying, hey man, just this is where you need to be. Go over here. So, you know, I'm glad for that in hindsight. It's all fucking beautiful. Um, so, yeah, and then of course Eric is there because Eric's got, Eric's like my Yoda. You know, I'll call Eric when I need, I need uh, a grounded sounding board. He is a extremely diplomatic human being and he always has sound advice for me so I wanted him on this too to see where he weighed in so it's an interesting conversation and I, I don't think that's the bulk of this uh, episode we talk about so many things but it's it's a piece of it but it just got me thinking here I am on the far side network that line popped in my head and it made me think about this episode so think about it and enjoy today's podcast. Peace. Hey, how's everyone? I know you had I know you had a, a tragedy in your home. I am so sorry. My condolences to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh uh, yeah. 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 Uh, besides this, which is huge. It's a, it is huge. It's a, yeah. it's a tragedy. Yep. Uh, I, I'm I'm taking a lot of good things out of the situation, actually. Okay, okay. This is good because Rod and I kind of touched on this when we were streaming, and this is why we wanted the podcast to get into some of this stuff. So, so go ahead, Rod. Talk about the the positives. Well, uh, first, um, I'm trying to think uh, about the the bad things. And see what I can take out of this for yeah. for me personally. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what can, what can I change? I think the the, the situation uh, allows is allowed me and allows everybody to rethink a lot of things. Mm. And, in what uh, way, Rod? Like, what kind of things are what in your particular case? What kind of stuff are you rethinking? Um. Uh, for example, family is mm -hmm. one of the things. Yeah. I used to uh, not keep in touch with my, my parents. Yep. Mm -hmm. We never had a normal, I mean, the close relationship with, uh, between us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, because what happened, uh, I'm, I'm trying to reconnect with them. That's awesome. And uh, it's been uh, very very nice for me it's yeah. also uh, uh, because of, of the pandemic I had to uh, slow down a little because uh, things at Marvel almost uh, stopped for a while mm -hmm. then uh, I need I, I had time to to, to spend with uh, something else besides uh, work you know yeah. what I mean? Which is yeah. is very rare. Is is very and uh, not not happen very often. I what what, uh, what kind of stuff did you end up spending time on? Uh, is it still art related, or is it something for 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 yourself? Just time off, or um, it's it's both it's, it's both things. It's the uh, time off. Uh huh. Uh, so. Uh, I had more time to spend with my wife, yep. doing stuff for us, yep. uh, playing board games. Um, what else? Watching TV. It, it's like uh, the this schedule thing is uh -huh. very hard for me. It's very difficult. I never uh, work work out this thing. So, yeah. uh, lately, the what, what do you mean, Rod? What schedule? 
like uh, what I, I I may say is um, because the the deadline is the the work. Oh, I the, right. I always put the work in in first place. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what uh, uh, I mean. Right. Uh, I, I gave understand. up. Uh, I, I I end up ended up gave, gave, giving up. Uh, my my fam uh, my time with her mm -hmm. to have more time working. Right. right. This is now. This kind of gets into some of the stuff you and I were talking about before, and yeah. um, I, I like you. We were you. I forget how you posed the question, but it was something to do with if you work for Marvel, you just uh, like you just accept all the flaws and, and enjoy it, but. Like for me, that was that was a big thing. Is is in order to sustain a living while working for a company like Marvel DC at the rates they're paying, which are low, you have to give up so much of your personal life to do so. And mm -hmm. th that's like this that that sort of stuff. After five years, I I just I was done. I, okay, yeah, but uh, but the thing is, is the is this my fault or is is this uh, Marvel's fault? Mm, mm. How is it? How? What do you? I think that's my fault. The way I, I deal with my personal life. All right. Well, they, for me, I can't say it was my fault because I was working nonstop, incessantly. I wasn't screwing off anywhere. But I, I think the the bigger problem here is they don't pay enough. Uh, that's that's kind of the point I'm making, and that, that is, yeah, no, you're right. Fault. You're right. You're right. Uh, if you think that you're giving up uh, your life for drawing for Marvel, uh, they they're not paying enough. But uh, at the same at, at the same token, uh, what we talked uh, last week was uh, no uh, no exactly where you you you're at what uh, what you're going to do how much are you going to give up of your life and how much are you going to give up uh how much uh, i mean the, the quality you know uh, for example uh i i'm learning that i don't need to give my hundred uh, 100 percent what, what what do you mean 100 percent in of, quality a quality you don't have to yeah if we, if we, if I need to give up my uh, my time with my wife, right? Is it, it? It's not worth. If you put the both things in the right, in I understand that. But I feel like if Marvel were to pay better, and I don't mean to single out Marvel, but DC too, mm -hmm. and give you the time you need, you could put out work you're very proud of and have the life you want. And still have time for your wife, and I mean, that's yeah, but that, that I don't think that uh, exists. <laughs> I does. I, I think it exists if you make it exist at Marvel and DC. I don't think it does. You're right, and I think that's one of, that again gets into one of the problems I have with working for them. Mm -hmm. Hey, Rod, has it always been, you know, one of your goals to work for a, a mainstream company? Um. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if it's uh, it's happened uh, in U.S. too, but here, mm -hmm. all young kids from my generation and maybe this this generation, they want to. They they don't know the difference between I I want to to draw uh, Spider Man. I want to draw yeah. Batman, and yeah. uh, I want to make comics. Yeah. They don't know the difference. So uh, yeah, I I wanted to to work for the the majors. I wanted to to work with uh, Captain America. I wanted to work with Spider Man. Yeah. But later on, I mm -hmm. learned uh, how uh, the different. And now uh, what is happening is that uh, uh, I want. To things at Marvel, uh, they are working for me very well. Mm -hmm. 
I want to use it, this uh, as my profile is getting higher. Yeah. I, I want to use this to do my stuff later. And uh, later. as I was saying, I, I can't give my 100% uh, for my, my personal projects. Mm. Mm. And uh, I can give my 80, 80%, which uh, is, is good for me, mm -hmm. for the, the mainstream. It, it doesn't mean that uh, I'm going to, to not do my, my best. Yeah, I understand. A, a what you're good, saying. I understand. It's just that uh, I I don't want to lose the to waste time. Uh, not not waste. I mean, uh, when, I don't want to lose moments of my personal life. Yeah. Right. In, for the yeah, no, that makes sense. the job. Well, yeah. Rod, can you, do, things, can you do me a can you do me a favor, Rod? Can you move the camera just a little bit so we can see what you're painting? Oh yeah, oh, no. because sorry, sorry. There you uh, go. Okay, it's uh, busy with it's okay. Well, that's me better. See. Uh, yeah, you're getting better. There. It's getting better. Okay, it's getting okay. There. good. Uh, let me know yeah, if the the camera move. Yep, that's great, man. That's good. Very great. Rod, sorry. I was just going to say to you that was my plan too, was to work at Marvel and DC to raise my profile and. Uh, and then go off and do my own stuff, but it, it didn't. It didn't quite go that way for me. So, when I hear you say that, I, I just it gives me a little pause. I mean, maybe, uh, and you seem to be doing well at Marvel. I'm not saying you're not, but mm -hmm. uh, for me, like the lesson was maybe I shouldn't have waited. Maybe I should have just gone and done my own stuff and found a way to make it work then. And that that that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I think it's uh, it's your choice. No, but right? right. But my what I'm saying is, think about that. If you're relying on Marvel to raise, working for them to raise your profile, it can go that way certainly, but it also mm -hmm. might not go that way. Uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah. You you're right, but uh, I can't say uh, as personal experience. Uh, I never planned it to to work for Marvel. Mm. You know, uh, I uh, I think uh, I, I said before I work as colorist. Right, that's team. right. You did say that, yeah. For uh, fifteen years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eric. Did you know he did that? I didn't. I didn't know that either. Yeah, no. Uh, I color at uh, the. Aquaman uh, 52, new, new, new 52 with uh, Ivan Reyes. Yeah, I, I saw your, that Superman drawing you just posted that you colored over him. It yeah. Really pretty. It was really pretty. I really liked the, the work you did on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, uh, we worked together for a long time. I mean, so and you I, worked I, kind of exclusively with Ivan? Mm, no, yeah. Uh, once we found found out that uh, we have a good chemistry and uh, we make we we make a good uh, creative team. Yeah, we work it together. We we close the our our team. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, we did a lot of things together. Then uh, suddenly. Uh, Kyle Higgins, he, we, we were uh, working together on Nightwing. Yeah. He called me. He saw my drawings and uh, he said if you, uh, I was, uh, interesting, it was interested in uh, do something for image. Then I had to, to choose between uh, keep with my, my career Right. which was a well-established career as a colorist. Uh-huh. And, uh, and changed everything and started a new career as a penciler, as an uh, interior artist. Yeah. So uh, I never planned that, too. I just 
went with the flow and uh, I took my chances. And then because of, of this choice, uh, Marvel has, uh, hired me to That's do awesome. more, to, to do stuff with them. And uh, again, uh, from the beginning, I never planned it to, planned mm -hmm. it to, uh, I never imagined it that uh, I could have the chance of yeah. work but for you, Marvel. But you dreamed of it when you were a kid, you said? Yes, yes, yes. But uh, as a uh, something very far, very... Um, yeah. Because in, in Brazil, uh, back, back in the 80s, Mm -hmm. is with no internet it's like uh was impossible to imagine uh, uh a way to to do that right 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 that's that's a good point so uh i i, I i'm very lucky I, I don't know if i can say that but uh think the what happened uh they just happened and uh, I took the chance. I need to make the decisions. And uh, so far, I'm seems that I'm making the right decisions for my career. Rod, let me just. I'm, I want to get back to Eric's original question because I kind of took everything in a different direction. But real quick, um, are you? I just. I think it'd be nice to talk about like techniques of what we're doing a little bit. So you're painting a Captain America. And you're using watercolor and a flat brush right now? Yes. Uh, this is my uh, base, my, my base color, right? Uh -huh. uh, I'm, uh, I tend to, to mix, use mixed media. So for starters, uh, I'm, I'm using the, the watercolors. Then when it, once it, it's uh, dry, I will see what I can do to add the uh, shadows and all the, the lightings, all the the, color, the lighting effects and everything. What will you do the shadow work with? Watercolor? Are you going to go to gouache or? Uh, I so uh, the thing is, uh, I never know what I'm going to use. That's amazing. Like, uh, that's I amazing. I have pencil colored pencils. I have. Uh, what did you pencil piece. the? What is the underdrawing done with? Is that a color pencil or graphite? Uh, the this this sketch is uh, colored pencils. What is it? All the same color? Oh, you mean? Oh, sorry. Uh, the the you, Captain America drawing. Did you use okay. just one pencil, like one color? No, no, no. I I used uh, blue pencil for the the general drawing. Uh huh. Then I I use it the uh, this red pencil to to draw these shadows and to mark this. Do you use red for any reason? Like any color um, choice reason that'll come through at the end of the painting, or um, that you just like the contrast of blue and red to do simple and refined parts of your drawing. Uh, no, uh, I I'm experimenting with that actually, uh, okay. and uh, the only thing that came to my mind was uh, I want to the lightning to the the lights to be warm. Right, okay. like okay. I want to add some uh, uh, yellow light here. Yeah, are you going to use? Uh, do you know what you're going to use for that? Watercolor, gouache, both. Um, I think watercolor for, and okay. also I I can use the the Crayola. I like this. Right. The, yeah, I know how the like crayons. Show that again, talk rod, because this is awesome. Speaking. Yeah, uh, I, I hope I, uh, I have time to use them so I can show how I, I use them. Right, yeah, that's awesome. He uses Crayola crayons. Um, okay, so, uh, and, and the reason I was asking is because I've, like, this is one of a few paintings I'm working on right now where I started with 
color pencil to get all the values established and I used black and uh, and as I'm moving forward I'm like huh what if I started messing with color in the under in the drawing portion of the painting and that's why I was asking you but okay, uh, what what do you use uh, acrylics uh, right now I'm using these acrylic inks um, th and I'm using them very thin and then after that's done, I'll use this uh, acrylic gouache to bring out the highlights and reflective light and stuff. But I'm going to build, what I'm working on right now is building as much depth into these rocks as possible. So in the foreground, I want to really get, build these up to a dark sepia. And then in the background, I, like I might just leave them very mm -hmm. faint like they already are. Um, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. And one thing that uh, uh, I want to say is that uh, I never attended a, a school of art. Okay. Right? Yeah, so, Eric, uh, I don't think Eric did either, right, Eric? Mm -hmm. You did yeah, not. Uh, Eric, are you a self touch person? Mm -hmm. Cool. So uh, let me see if you think the, the same way that I, I think. Uh, around this subject. Uh, he, uh, what I, I never attended a school, so oh, I had to learn as I I'm, I'm, was facing the, the challenge, uh, I knew what I, what I wanted to do. Then I, look at, uh, I was looking forward, I'm uh, looking at uh, ways to, to get there. Right. So a uh, lot of basics, uh, I, I miss it. And Wait, what, a, lo a lot of days, what was that first part? A lot of basics, like, I think he said that. Basics. A lot of basics. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I learned it, oh, what I, I wanted, uh, what I needed to, to, yeah. to draw. So I, I don't have a process well established. Uh, I don't have a... I just know. Uh, I, I just know uh, how to get there. Yeah. If, if if it makes sense, so it's like having a, a a puzzle with missing pieces, but you can't see the the main figure anyway. It right. it, it works anyway. Well, yeah. So you, it's hard you have for a goal. Me to no, it sounds so, uh, like you have a goal in mind, right? You uh -huh. have something in your head that you're like, okay, I want to go. I want it to kind of look like this. But because of the lack of formal training, whether it be school or university, you don't mm -hmm. necessarily know the, the foundational stuff. You just know the goal, right? Yeah, I learned by myself the, some foundations. Yeah. Uh, like... Uh, in order to be a colorist, I had to learn uh, color theory. Right. right? And, but uh, I, I, and, uh, I had to learn uh, Photoshop. Right. But I, I would never teach uh, Photoshop or teach coloring because uh, it's hard to, to teach what you learn uh, instinctively, is by instinct. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Rod, I think I that, that your process, because you haven't been like formally trained, I envy it a bit because your whole process is about the journey of creating and you discover, you're completely open to discovering as you go. And, mm -hmm. and I think that that's, that's an amazing thing that, uh, that you have. Whereas like I, I am uh, very much the opposite. <laughs> but the, the the learning curve when you have formal uh, up, up, you go to school it is mm -hmm. better I think it's more complete in the why, why the is that take, Rod? Why, do you, a, why do you think that because it takes a lot of effort to to learn things by yourself mm. That's assuming also you have teachers who know what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> That's a, which is a big assumption, I think, in, in the world of art school right now. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> 
But Eric, I would point to Eric as someone who is self-taught and one of one of the most amazing artists I've known. Oh, You're right. And uh, uh, let me let me hear from uh, Eric what you think about this about um, the, the idea of schools. Um, it may have been parts of, I believe in everything that you're saying, right? Your personal experience to me is, is 100% true to your, to your journey, to where you've gotten. For me, you know, I came from a very, uh, um, I would say not, you know, my, my mother worked two jobs, right? I didn't have the opportunity to be able to afford formal training much less like state training, you know, like there's, there's different kinds of universities in the U S rod. There's like a state school, which is more local. Right. And then there's a university, which is like the more expensive version, but especially bigger universities like art center, which was, you know, when I was living in California was the place that you wanted to go to. If you wanted to be an in industrial design or Cal arts, if you wanted to be in an animation, but for the foundational stuff, I didn't have access to that. So, but I still wanted art as a career and I knew for sure that I didn't, um, uh, I couldn't afford it. Now, luckily for me, I got hired to work uh, at an animation company when I was in, when I was seventeen. So immediately, I started getting uh, practical experience, right, like on the job experience. Um, and I was being taught by guys who had been working in the industry for you know, for decades, right? So if I didn't know how to do something in perspective, they would show me what that looked like. If I didn't, I didn't understand lighting, they would show me what that looked like. And this is all at 17 years old and it's happening real time, you know? Mm -hmm. So whereas if you were in university, this would take like four years, this was happening in about eight months, right? Like in eight, nine months. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I learned, I mean, I retained everything. Like I, I don't remember everything that I learned, but it did what it established in me is the muscle to go, well, if I want to learn that, I've actually got to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think a lot of, a lot of foundational teaching when it comes to school and university has so much theory in it. The practicality of doing it isn't as, uh, isn't as well taught. You know, you know what I mean? They'll talk Eric, about how, how, Eric, how, can I just say how right you are from having been a teacher for as long as I was that you just nailed it. Yeah. Everything is taught in theory and this may work or that may work. But I think until you start getting, until you start making a lot of mistakes, you know, until you start applying yourself, applying what you kind of learn in theory and then put it into uh, actual practice you don't really know whether or not it works for you because theory, especially when it comes to the stuff that we do, you know, sequential art, right? Theory um, works in the most general way, right? Like this could work based on X, Y, and Z artists that we've studied so far, but how you turn that into something that's useful for you and more importantly, unique and signature to the body of work that you're doing, that doesn't happen until you actually start doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, if I've learned, if I've learned anything in that experience, you know, apply, you know, learn as much as I can up until the point where I go like, okay, I'm not learning anything else. And now I'm going to start doing it. Right. So to your, mm -hmm. so to your question, right? Like th without, without formal training, um, would university or would formal, you know, would it have been better for me? And I would say, because I have the benefit of, you know, history and looking back, I'd say no. For some people, it works, um, but I don't think it's the best way to go about it. I think there is so much theory that's being taught. And, and I also am very practical, Rod. So I always think of it as like, how much is that learning going to cost me? <laughs> like I just had a conversation with, with um, uh, my father-in-law. And we were talking about how when kids leave school, they are immediately uh, in debt right yeah mm -hmm. and and can you imagine especially now now if you they if they went to school in order to learn the stuff that we're we're doing there is no guarantee that once you leave school there's going to be a job waiting for you so can you imagine leaving school being x amount of thousands if not tens of thousand dollars in debt 
and now going like, okay, so how do I apply this skill that I've learned? You know, how do I begin to, to do that? So there's all sorts of things bouncing around in my head. And I always, I always think the best, the best way you can gain experience is learn some foundational stuff. Especially, like in your case, you, learned, you had to learn color theory because you were coloring a book, right? Mm-hmm. But did you have to go and learn like, you know, layout and composition and anatomy and you know what I mean? That was, that, that's not necessarily that, you know, I'm not saying that you didn't know it, but you, it wasn't as prioritized. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yep. so yep. I think there's stages to learning and you don't have to learn everything all at once, all at the same time. You just have to be self-aware enough to go like, okay, what do I need to know right now based on the job that I want? Based on the, excuse me, based on the goals that I'm trying to go for. Because sometimes it's a job, sometimes it's just getting better at craft. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, yeah, and uh, because everything happened so uh, out of the blue, and uh, I, I, I didn't think about, oh, maybe wasn't, wasn't a good idea to change things, to jump into this, to, to jump into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never thought about, what I had to learn in mm. order to, to mm. do it. I just yeah. had, had to, um, to do the, the leap of faith. Yep. Yep. Well, you, you had to learn what you had, or you had to learn what you had to in order to continue to be a viable artist for the industry that you're in, right? Like, mm. no, you know, you, in order to, to make a living, in order to get by, you needed to be a, a good colorist, if not a great colorist. So you got really, really good at that, right? And so mm-hmm. I think that's what people are, are missing now is that they, they have the, there's, a general, there's an assumption that foundational learning has to be about everything. And I don't, I don't think that's true. I think that's actually a hindrance because foundational learning often revolves around theory. And if you just, you know, you have to decide, and it's not to say that you can't change your mind later, like you, rather, you started off as a colorist, but then suddenly you got the opportunity to go be, you know, um, the guy who's actually drawing the book. So then you go, like, okay, I think I'm pretty decent at drawing this anatomy stuff. Now I can focus on that and get even better at that, right? Mm-hmm. So I think everything, sh- everything can be done in stages and not everything should be taught from a theoretical standpoint. Yeah, it's you're right. It's a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Mental masturbation. <laughs> yeah, I think there's. But, a, uh, I, yeah. I hope that people, the when they listen, listen to to this. What I especially what I'm saying, don't think that it works for everybody. Yeah, that's sure. a good point. Yeah, I think it's important for everyone to understand, and it took me a while to kind of accept this on my own. But everyone's journey is completely unique to them. In terms of the, in terms of their art and this career, and everything, everyone's got a different story to tell and a different means of creating. Uh, yeah, and uh, another thing that, uh, about this, uh, this uh, what I'm missing when I, I didn't have the the formal ed- education. Mm-hmm. When you see a uh, Brian Stelfreeze painting. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You see that uh, he start doing a, a a layer a under uh, under color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is can be purple, can be uh, a gradient, a uh, gradient from uh, yellow to green, mm-hmm. and after a couple of uh, layers of ink. You see that is something completely, uh, something completely different happened. Right. Yeah. Right. And and suddenly you have a a color scheme. And uh, if for me it's it's very hard to think the, this way. Yeah. Mm. Well, like I, think, you know, uh, think uh, uh, think about the, the future. You know, uh, think about sure. it the foundation and uh, what's going to happen. Right. Right. But also I think Rod, I mean, I know Brian well, personally, he, he taught me a lot when I was coming up. He's a very academic thinker when it comes to art. And I think that's one way, 
but I, I think there are artists like out there that are not like I, I've spoken to Andrew and Andrew's often just saying, well, I mean, he has reasons for doing what he's doing, but he also is like, I just felt like doing it this way and he, he'll trust his gut. Whereas Brian like has a system in his head that he follows. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I'm just saying it depends on the person, I think, and, and their personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm more like a chao chaotic artist. Right, right. That's what I was going to say. Is and then they, that earlier, that's what I was saying. Is one of the things I, I uh, like talking to you about, and I'm, I admire watching it in action. Is seeing how organic your your just your flow and process is. Because I'm someone who's so, like, logical. I don't know if logic's the word, but uh, well, you're, planned, you measured. Yeah, you, you lean closer to Brian than yeah. you would to Andrew in your examples, right? Right, right. But I, I am trying to learn how to, how to let go of some of that, that stuff. And I think I am. I mean, uh, in, in a lot of ways, I'm doing a lot of things. To uh, embrace some of Andrew's teachings to me, because I I interned under Andrew. This at the same time, I would drive up to Macon from Savannah. I'd spend the day with Andrew or a couple days in Macon. Then I'd go up to Atlanta and I'd go into Gaijin for a day and get lessons from Brian. So I had these like these two incredible artists teaching me things and. Brian could explain everything and gave me a reason for everything, which as a student for me, I, I needed that. I needed to understand why I was doing, but now like as an adult with some years behind me now, when I first started like getting into painting again, I, I spent a lot of time on the phone with Andrew and uh, it gave me the confidence or the, Maybe it's not confidence, but I get excited about not knowing. Like, I didn't know. I don't know where this is going, this painting. Right. And I'm, I'm right. listening to it as I go. I have a general idea of what the colors are, but I've also stopped, like, trying to plan it all out in my head. And I come into the painting. Like, the initial wash, which you can probably see, is this gold yellow. And this, you probably, I don't even know if you can see it, this really warm, almost reddish brown. And mm -hmm. uh, that was, I didn't know what that was going to do. And I didn't know what it would do when I laid green on top of it. Um, and uh, I'm just kind of listening to it as I go. So, yeah, I'm learning. I'm growing. Yeah, no, that's the same. It's a mess. I'm going to save it, Eric. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> Rod, you were going to say something? No, uh, I was saying that uh, this is the same for me. Uh, I never know where uh, what's going to happen with the, the, the drawing. I, I can't change. I, I never stick with the initial plan for yeah. uh, to the end. I think for I me, just just leave. I, I just leave the the painting to tell me what what the direction. Yeah, that's awesome. And that, that's, you know, for me, I, what allowed me to do that was embracing the idea that I don't know. And if I don't know, I've got to figure it out as I go. And if I do something wrong, it'll just teach me not to do it again. But so far, all the mistakes have led me down a path of learning. And that's all I'm really focusing on is making each one get like look, taking a lesson or two from each painting instead mm -hmm. of you know, trying to make a perfect painting. You guys are too much chaos for me, man. <laughs> well, Eric, I'm saying all this with a, with a giant grain of salt because I am wired how I'm wired. I was getting, yeah, that's still too much chaos. That's still not enough planning. <laughs> all right. So, well then let me back up Eric and see if this makes you, Recent, I knew going in, I yeah. wanted a really flat orange 
background because the reflective light on the Hulk is going to be cerulean blue. And I've right. recently become very obsessed with the use of cerulean blue. <laughs> right. And it's because of the impressionists, the post-impressionists, but also looking at a lot of Phil Hale's paintings. He did sure. a series where the background was just this flat cerulean blue. And I like right. that. So uh, my whole goal here is to do whatever I have to do to get that blue to sing. So there is there there is intent. See, it's not like you're just going in there throwing paint paint on the. Canvas no, no, that's what Rod's water. doing. <laughs> I'm not there. <laughs> I don't mean to make. You it have a plan. You have a plan. I have a plan. Now I'm open to different paths taking me towards my destination as I go, because I'm not informed enough to guide those to guide myself directly there with experience. That is where my mind will take me one day because <laughs> gotcha. that's how I am. You're going to eventually rot it. Is that what you're saying? I get it. No, no. I'm eventually going to, it's going to be all like, I know exactly where I'm going. It's going to be a whole plan in my head <laughs> because I, no matter how much I throw myself into the, to the deep waters of, of like forcing myself to discover as I go, yeah. as I learn, I start to apply the plan. Gotcha. All right. It's just can, my nature. Can I can I come back a little quick? Yeah. Uh, to the initial question that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, one of the things that changed because the the pandemic is that uh, since Marvel was very slow, I mm -hmm. opened my commission list. Yeah. And uh, I. I can, I have to say that uh, that uh, the, uh, it, it's been a couple of months where I, all I had to do is is drawing and uh, painting and uh, having fun. Very right. Not very not like what is uh, working uh, in a with a schedule a monthly right. book. So right. I. I, I learned it a lot of of, of things, uh, the drawing, the my my painting got better because of this. I sure. uh, I had the creatively. I was happy. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. So uh, that was a, a, a awesome thing that happened, and uh, I I hope that I can take this to uh, moving forward. Right. Were you Enjoy. creatively unhappy working under those schedules, Rod? Um, for Corona? Yeah, but I, 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 I'm not going to say I wasn't happy, but uh, I didn't feel creatively uh, challenged. Mm. Right, right. Because uh, you, because of the, the deadlines, you need to go to move uh, yep. on uh, aut automatic. Right, mm -hmm. right. You you don't uh, can afford to think too much about the the, the layouting, the narrative. The right that that I mean for me, that sucks. Because when I make a comic, I want to make something as good as I can make it. And I, I want to do whatever I can to make the narrative work better and, and make the shots work better and all that stuff. So for me, that was a, that kind of like sunk into my, my thinking a lot. Mm -hmm. Sean, cares, Sean cares too much, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I, I I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, coming back Sean, to what Sean's a true craftsman. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, yeah, and you can't you 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 can't uh, have your personal projects where you can uh, give your best, but I'm not. I, I don't know if they care about your best uh, uh, at this. Uh, Publishers? No, they mm -hmm. don't. No, they. I, I agree. I don't think they it's, do either. Uh, that's not true. That's. It depends on. 
it, I, I do feel that my Batman project that I did was I, I at the time that was the best work I, I was capable of, and and uh, DC was, or I should say, Mark was right on board with with me doing that, and and helpful. So I think it's possible. I think it's rare. Mm-hmm. I know, and Marvel, where it, it where, wait, 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 wait. It's, ra- it's rare that that you can do your best work on on mainstream comics. I th- from that was my experience. Mm. Under the schedules that that they were giving, it became harder and harder at Marvel. There are there was a, I, I think there are a couple of issues I did at Marvel that I had the schedule I needed that allowed me for it, but. That was in the my that was not the uh norm. Yeah. Why do you think that's a crazy statement, Eric? That you're that you can do your best while working. I don't think that's crazy. I think that I think that what Rod part of what Rod was talking about early in our conversation is true, which is like you have to relegate your personal expectations to not turning in your best because you know that the environment is not set up so that you can do your best. Now, the fact that you could find your Batman work to be some of the best stuff that you've ever done is, like you said, the rare exception. But as it is, as comics is set up, it's not meant for people to turn in their best work. They're meant to turn in the best work given the situation. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Right. So, yeah. so if you want me to build a, the fastest, safest race car you've ever seen, or like, you know, the, the most astounding space shuttle, right? Right. And you wanted to do, you, and you wanted me to do it in eight months, right? Mm-hmm. Something yeah. is going to suffer, right? Right. Something is going to end up not going into space somehow, right? (laughs) (laughs) But you have to, but you have to look at it to go like, what is the intent, right? Is, is it to just send something into space? I can cross that off the list, right? But if you want it to go into space, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Fast. If you want it to go into space um, efficiently, one of those things, one of those boxes, I'm not going to be able to check off. I will just barely be able to get something into space. Right. 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 Uh, the guy driving that shuttle is probably going to die, right? Cause that's going to need more time to, to develop, right. right. Uh, bringing it back from space. That's probably going to be impossible. That's going to be stuck in orbit forever. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Marvel is, has built a, a, what do you call it? A, um, or I don't want to pick on Marvel, like mainstream comics yeah, has yeah. built a system to just barely get something into space. Right. right. Everything that we've spoken about in regards to notable exceptions, regardless of company, whether it be Marvel or DC or what have you, have always been a special projects. All the things that were referred to in this day and age have, be- have been special projects or pet projects or independent of their space launching or, you know, shuttle launching into space campaigns. Right. Right. And, that is like Dark Knight Returns, right? right. Watchmen. Right. Um, so if you go to the Marvel side, all of the stuff that required that we now refer to as like, man, that was amazing, was rarely ever monthly books. So if you want to make, if you want to set up an artist to do their best work, I, I do not think doing it monthly is going to be the best way to go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, if you do want it monthly, you're going to get work that is just good enough. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm so happy working for Marvel because sure. uh, uh, they allowed me to, to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like it, yeah. uh, I'm so fortunate to they 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 let me do my coloring my my stuff crazy not uh, too house style so uh, just to clarify s- something uh, I think that the 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 point for me is what you you're going to give up 
in order to yes. re, to yeah, get your one hundred percent. I understand. Okay. Yep. So that's the the the, the, the mathematic you need to. Yeah. And uh, if you want to, if you're going to give up uh, time with your family, uh, I, it, it, they need to pay you a lot of money. Right. If you're going to uh, give up this. Right. I agree. I agree. I agree. But, they, but they're not going to pay you that money. No, no. And I don't. I don't think there's. I don't think they're in the business of doing that. No, no, no. I think for every person that steps away and says, "Hey, I'm. I can't do this because I choose to be, you know, with my family instead," or I, you know, to Rod's point, I, I do not. I don't want to sacrifice this thing that's so much more important to me, right? Right. Um, there are five, six people that are in line for that, you know, right. who that's will be true. more than happy to take on and sac- make that sacrifice. Now, whether or not they'll continue to make that sacrifice X amount of years from now, you know, and that's a, actually that's a good that's a good point of reference is that when you first break into the industry when you first cut your teeth on something um, from Marvel or something, you know, let's just, let's just say mainstream, right? Right. You are a lot more open to sacrifice. You are a lot more yeah. open to like, yeah, I, I won't, you know, I'll, I'll prioritize deadlines over family, my, my relationships, my other commitments outside of work. I'll prioritize work instead. Right. The, the, the further along you go, I suspect, and this is not for everyone, I suspect you either deprioritize um, the quote unquote like best work ever that you put. You put just enough work so that you can spend time with family, so that you can do all the other things that that is not work or deadline related. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I think I see that more and more the further along a guy is in in their. Yeah, career. I think you're totally right about that. Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, I want to get back to Eric's very first question because I thought it was a good one. And, and uh, What did I say? I forgot. Back to, you asked what were the positive experiences that COVID have, that you've gotten out of this COVID experience, Rod. And I know you talked about your schedule stuff, but what else? Because I know there's other stuff too we've talked about. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I... I'm enjoying very much the uh, slowing down. What makes me uh, time to to think about a lot of things to uh, reset uh, priorities, to set new priorities because we a lot of things that we take for granted uh, we. We're not doing this or not, uh, uh, again, uh, I use it not to, to see my parents very often. Right. Now right. I, I miss this, uh, having the, the choice to, to see them. Mm-hmm. And so, you said um, you didn't have a great relationship with them before this? And this is um, closer together. Yeah, 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 yes. When I I told my father that uh, I wanted to to uh, work with comics, we we didn't sp- speak for three years because so, of the decision to work in comics. Yes. Why? What was his? What was the problem with that? Was it that, that you were going to be an artist, or was it? because of comics specifically? Um, he got me this job uh, in a bank. Oh. Then uh, I, when I had the chance to, to invest in um, this, this career, yeah. I just, uh, I, I didn't think twice. I just right. said, okay, I'm, I'm out. I'm going to, to do what I want to do. And, uh, he apparently he he didn't like back then. Right, right. So, but but now I understand the the reason anyway. And uh, now that he, I go ahead, go ahead. No, no. Now that I I, I prove it to him that uh, I 
I can be successful. Yeah. He's one of my best friends. That's right great, now. man. And you said, and did the, you had him on your podcast, Rod? Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and was that the first time you guys spoke after three years of not speaking? Um, no. Uh, first time that, that we came back on good terms was yeah. when I, I got divorced for my, my first time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought that he was the only person that I wanted to talk about. And uh, we talked and uh, we started uh, talking in good terms and become uh, fathers and son, right? Right. That's great, man. Then uh, because I was doing all my podcasts and uh, using them as the therapy for many issues I, I, uh, I was having, right. I decided to record one podcast with with him mm-hmm. where uh, we spoke we we talked as uh, two men to uh, as friends not we 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 went past we passed the father son talk yeah. right, right right and that was important to understand uh uh, his reasons and uh, his flaws and everything and then he told me uh, dirt stories from his past when he was a kid and uh, he what kind of stories did you say no uh, some uh, fun dirty stories okay things <laughs> that uh, you usually don't don't Say don't don't talk to your son, or you right. wait for you. your your you. son to have a, a certain age to understand, right? I got you. Yeah. Um, and this uh, ha- uh, help it, uh, this help it us to have right now a, re- a really good relationship. That's and uh, it, uh, I, I said to to Sean uh, last week that uh, I, I was the one who gave the, the news to my, my mother about my, my brother passing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it, this was the, the hardest thing ever I had to, to do. I bet. Yeah, I can't imagine that. That's, that's a lot. So uh, I'm trying to get get this better at least uh, get this part of my life with uh, not having regrets not have because uh, the other thing is that uh, I was having problems with my my brother it's been uh, years since last time we, we spoke wow oh really I didn't know yeah and uh, so when your brother got sick, were you speaking or no? No, no, I was. Oh. Uh, I I used to ask my mother and my father for uh, news. I was worried about because when he got he got COVID, uh, we knew that uh, probably something like this would happen because he, he had uh, diabetes, mm. uh, overweight. Mm-hmm. So it's totally uh, danger area. Of no, no good to to have COVID. Right, right. right. Yeah. So uh, in the uh, we never had to, the chance to to set things right. You never to, had that chance. No, no, because the last. Uh, and uh, he was a Bolsonaro support supporter. What does that mean, Rod? Uh, well, our president. He liked mm-hmm. it, our, our president. Right. Oh, he was like a Trumpy in Brazil. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> yes. for the American listeners who may not know, Brazil has a president who's as nutso, if not more so, than our own. 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, no. Here's uh, uh, Brazil right now. It's like is like a dark reflection of US in that sense. Because everything you 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 have there, we have, right. but uh, because uh, our country is economically is very weak, uh, all the damage is way worse than. Right. So, it, so it, 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 anyways, uh, just to finish. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I blocked him on on Facebook. Oh my god! So because was, of that, was the tension between you and your brother political in its origin, or were you guys not speaking, and then the politics made it even harder? Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. The the politics thing made uh, made harder. Yeah, we we are from. Uh, he made a lot of bad choice financially, and uh, I got affected by by this. Mm. So and that's, that's where the tension started. Yes. Okay. Yes, and uh, sadly, uh, we never had the chance to. To talk because he he wasn't uh, a bad person, but a very problematic person. Got it. <laughs> yeah, man, the, yes, it, it is what it is. It's so, so uh, I don't want to. I don't want to make the same mistake with my parents. Right. Yeah, I guess I totally understand that. Well, I mean, this is good for me to hear. I'm having a lot of trouble speaking to a relative of mine. Uh, as well, so hearing your story is making me think about a lot of things right now. Good, good. I hope that uh, it helps. And uh, come coming back to the the podcast thing. Uh, uh, after that, we he's my 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 best friend right now. And uh, your dad. One thing that yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, all the podcasting for me was very helpful and uh, taught me a lot of things. And uh, I'm that one uh, I, I love in the when I discovered your podcast, I felt the same because I, I could relate to the, the conversations and struggle and everything and. Uh, that was my goal when I started doing podcasts to share uh, my problems and to, to and uh, and more so uh, to talk about this, which for me was very difficult. And so I I took advantage of the the media to speak to speak out to to talk about those things. How long have you been podcasting for, Rod? No, uh, uh, right now I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. I quit podcasting, but I, I, I did for good two, three years. Wow. And at some I, point, I, I had four podcasts going on at the at the same time. Crazy. Yeah, Rod had explained to me on his uh, uh, Instagram live podcasting became a problem uh, for him. Problem. Like he was obsessed with it and doing it too much. He, uh, he, he proposed to his wife on his podcast too, but then he was podcasting so much, it became a problem with his wife and him gotcha. between them. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. But uh, once I brought her to, to this universe, she... She totally understood and uh, everything. Wait, which, which universe, Rob? The podcasting, this oh, thing oh, that oh, I, I was uh, obsessed uh, about. Right, right, right. No, I, I, I had uh, one podcast to talk art with my friends. I mm -hmm. had one podcast to talk uh, life with my wife. I had one podcast to talk... Uh, bullshit with my other friends and 
Uh, also, I created the first the Doctor Who podcast to discuss. Did you really? The, yes. That's a popular well, I, dude. I understand why you got burned out. That's a lot of uh, that's a lot of things to maintain all at the same time, dude. Yeah. But uh, man, uh, I had a lot of fun producing, and uh, it was a good time. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Well, I would hate to think that you did it because you were miserable. It's obvious that you are, you're having a good time <laughs> or else you wouldn't continue and take a special yeah. kind of brain to go, I really hate doing this, but I'm going to continue doing it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I understand why you had to, you had to wind all that down. Just listening to it makes me, makes me exhausted, man. Just tired, just listening to like all the things that you just described. <laughs> yeah, but once uh, my uh, comic book career uh, started start working, I had to make the the decision, and uh, sure. of course, the I had to let it go. Yeah, you picked the wrong. You made the wrong decision, Ron. <laughs> Come on. There's more money in podcasting, yeah. Rod, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're, having, you're having more fun during podcasts, Rod. Forget about comics. Dude. And uh, I, I, I learned all by myself how to, to edit, how, how to, oh, yeah. what to do, yeah. and everything. Yeah, but that's fun, though, right? Like learning all of that stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, like. Yeah. It's really a lot of fun. It's not as much work as people think it is because when you're passionate, like for instance, this is also applicable in art. When you're, mm -hmm. when you're enjoying yourself, when you're passionate about something and you're like super into it, only on reflection years later, months later, weeks later, right? When you mm -hmm. look back, then you go, fuck, that's a lot of work, <laughs> you know? Like, but right, in the moment right. that you're doing it, the research, even the money that you end up spending on it because it gets pricey. Right? Yeah, it does. Like mm. any any endeavor that you're super into that's not, you know, something that's just gonna, you know, uh into your interest one day and out of your interest the next day, something that you're really into, it can get really expensive. More importantly, it can get really time consuming, right? right. So yeah. it's a lot of work, but you don't see it when you're in the middle of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you You're you, right, you're totally you, right. You don't, you're not even paying attention to it. You just think of like, okay, so what else can I do in order to make this thing cooler? Or, right. well, you know, I'm having so much fun. I'm going to do the next thing that challenges me, you know? Mm -hmm. And then like you, you take a step back from it. You know, you go like, okay, well, I'm done with that. I'm, I'm going to focus on this part of my career. Yeah. Now, if, and I that, ask, if, I were, if I were to ask you now, Rod, it's like, was it a lot of work? <laughs> I bet you, you'd be like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> it was a lot oh, no, of work. It yeah. was Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, I, I, I use it to stay late. I stay uh, out late working on the the podcast on the editing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was fun. It I had was no fun. regrets. It, yeah. Yeah. And uh, what you said that uh, exactly what made so easy to to let it go to say now I. Uh, I'm done. I'm ready for the next thing to be obsessed about. <laughs> it's, it's, right now, it sounds like your freaking art career, you know? Yeah. I, I, but also, and I here's can the, say that, uh, yes, here's the thing ahead. that I've recognized about you, right? Like, it's just based on this conversation. I think you're the, I believe that you're that kind of guy that has dedication built into your personality, you know? Um, I think in regards, to, especially the three topics, let's just, let's keep it to the three topics that we talked about so far, which is art, mm -hmm. right? And the, the broadness that is breaking into or making a career of, of, of comics, right? And then just mm -hmm. now you were talking about podcasts and how you were doing like four or five or 10 or 20. I lost, like the moment somebody goes, I did more than one thing at any given time. Me, I have a, I have a number of things that I can do, which is like three, all at the same time, right? And that third one is going to suffer no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. but, the, but the important one to me that's a standout is what the pandemic has done to you and how much you've rededicated yourself to family, you know? And that's a big mm -hmm. one, right? It's, but it's in your personality to identify the thing that you, it's important to you. In one case, it was podcasting. In the other case, it was comics. But now it's family. And you're like, 
I'm going to now de-emphasize, not make bad, right? Not abandon art, right? Uh, I'm now going to de-emphasize the kind of dedication that I used to put into my comic book career and rededicate myself to become a, a better son, a better, a better husband. A better, you know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. amazing. That's great. So uh, that's the one thing I've recognized. Like, oh, Rod kind of likes being obsessed about things, but not obsessed in a bad way, you know? Right. Yeah, and uh, it, that's what I, when I say I'm a nerd person, mm-hmm. that's what uh, I, I want to say. Uh, I go deep yeah. when I find some, and then when I find something that caught my attention, my interesting, I go deep. I, I want to do my best to learn uh, about it. And uh, it's going to last, last when, uh, when it's, it's good and uh, I can't go to another thing, it, yep. it's going to be okay. That's awesome, man. That's great. Eric, let me ask you, you just said like you can do two things and, yeah. and it'll be functional for you. But once you hit the third. Oh, I, can do, I can do three things, but that third thing is going to be fucked up no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> how, no how matter what. How it take you to come to that realization? Uh, like 35 years. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, it took a while to understand that you can do uh, relatively two things decently, right? Or one thing amazingly, exceptionally, right? right? But you are going to do three things and that third thing is going to be done in the most mediocre way possible. That's, that's and I think it's just our our brain's capacity to take on the sort of things like it, the third thing has to be substantial, right? You just can't be like, oh, uh, you know, I draw and I I edit I edit podcasts or videos, and the third thing that I do is is cut the lawn. Well, cutting the lawn doesn't require any high level, you know, um, ingrained skill set, right? It, it, right. It, it requires skill, but it's not to the point where there's a level of like craftsmanship. You know? Right. I understand. But if you were to say to yourself, I want to um, be a great uh, cinematographer, right? Right. Uh, an above, above average, let's say amazing uh, writer and also a, you know, a, an exceptional musician, Right. Right. One of those things is not going to be very good because all of those things require so much time and study that you'll do the third thing almost passively and you will eventually end up embarrassing yourself should you ever release it out to the public. (laughs) Um, So for me, the rule is like, okay, as soon as I get rid of that third, that second thing, I'm going to move on to the third thing to make it great. It does not mean I don't have something lined up in that third spot because I know I'm eventually going to get there. You know, it just takes a little bit of time for me to go, okay, I think this is good, you know? Right. Um, okay. I'll get back. I'll get back to this, but I'll move on to the third thing and try to go get good at that. Right. Gotcha. That's smart. That's like uh, a color. I mean, that... Color has been the biggest weakness in my body of work. Right. And I'd always known that it was going to be the third thing until I said, okay, enough of this other stuff. Right. So, but, but in understanding that was going to, that was a weakness in my craft. Right. Mm-hmm. right. I had to identify what I needed to do in order to be good at color. And I was like, I think I need to land my values first. Right? Exactly, let, me la- let me land value. That's right? exactly what made it work for me too. Right. Let me land value. Let me understand how any and all of this stuff works. And then as soon as I have that, I'll start del- delving into color. So re- deprioritizing value and now going into color. That's when I started going like, oh, there's so much more to this and just value. But it gave me a foundational right. understanding of where right. to start. Right. 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 Because it started to become about like color temperature and blah, 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 and how it plays all to each other. Oh, and then it starts so to become much, about yeah. like so much. It's a lot. It's and, a lot. And then, and then that's all of that. Like, so I don't know if you guys operate the same. I don't know if this is the same for you, Rod, right? Mm-hmm. But once I learn everything, right, I now have to actively unlearn it. Does that make sense to you? Yes. 
It does. You yes, have to learn yes. the rules and, and then let yourself break them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, it's, that's the reason why I was, the, when you guys were talking about just like pure on chaos, you know, mm-hmm. I was smiling because I was thinking to myself, like, gosh, I admire these guys who just immediately apply themselves into the thing because I need, for me, the reason why my shit looks so like awful is because it took time to get into that level of awfulness, you know, like I needed the, t- I needed the eight months to understand just like, how does light work? How does that, you know, how does that complementary color work? And what can I do to make it work in a, in a you know, it, with three colors? How can I make it work with right. four colors, you know? And then from there, go like, okay, I don't care enough about that. I'm just going to do the thing, you know? Yeah, I think for me, it was exactly what you just said, but feeling like it was too big of a mountain to climb and just saying, you know what? Just go have fun with it again. Stop worrying. Stop planning and and letting all that ignorance i was feeling prevent me from doing it i think that's something else though sean and if you don't mind me if you don't mind me saying so right like go for it i think what you're talking about it goes back to the bit that i was talking about in regards to like university training right yeah you existed in so much theory but there was too much theory Right. Right. It was already, it was impeding any sort of application that you were getting into, right? right? And so only until recently did you go like, okay, enough of that. I think I'll always have theory as a, as a crutch. I, I'm using that term very loosely. Uh-huh. I'll always have theory as a clutch to fall back into if I, don't, if I don't know how to get out of this. But for now, let me get out of that and just start actually applying. Right. Right. Yeah. So I don't think it's, it's how you describe, this is just my theory. You tell me if that makes sense. But like, I'm, because I only, I came from that space too, where I was just like, okay, that's, that's enough learning about that. Let's go make the mistakes now. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. you're absolutely right. And I remember you uh, saying that to me once a long time ago, you were drawing, you're like, I'm not concerned about my anatomy being correct. Right. And I, I remember you like starting to explore those ideas. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for conversa- me. Oh, go ahead, Rod. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was going to say that for me, uh, it's important to, for uh, I'm saying for my uh, commissions, mm-hmm. yeah, when I do traditionally, to have the, the this uh, adventure, uh, yeah. Uh, adventure, yeah, not to uh, uh, have too much uh, comfort zone. Of the the theory, the the fundamentals, and the, yep. mm-hmm. so I think that the the fun is to uh, let it go, and uh, if I screwed up, I just uh, go to uh, start start again, and uh, yeah, and have this uh, this fun for me the. Having the this journey, the adventure, is mm-hmm. is more important. And I had a lot of this when I said that uh, I I was working on my commissions. That yeah. was the fun, and then the dis- discover the uh, uh, artistically speaking for me, right. uh, personal. Right. That's great. No, I love it. And uh, and uh, w- well, what make me. Uh, do this is that uh, financially uh, I I was so uh, lucky to uh, to have this comfort. Not I, I, I didn't need to worry about money, mm. so I could just think about uh, the, the other things and make yeah. this uh, right. quarantine experience more. Uh, productive more fun right. and uh hopefully i can take something good and positive out, out of this right. right cool i'd come to find that the moment you take and this is not going to be a viable option for everyone mm-hmm. but the moment you take the financial concept out of the equation the more the finances part comes. 
right? You are are right, man. (laughs) Like, as soon as you decide, hey, I'm like, for instance, a, a an awful exercise that I used to do. Sean Rod, I don't know if you went through this, is that whenever I'd come up with images that I do on my own, whenever I'd come up with like fan art that I do on my own, yeah. I'd always think of it as like, I'd always go to the thing of like, okay, so what's, what's selling right now? You right. know, right. like what do I know for sure is going to catch the kind of eyeballs that blah, 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 right? Like you just, you just list off the, like a potential person could buy, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And then... Because I, because I did that under that motivation, when it didn't sell or when it didn't do as much as it should have by way of attention, whether it be social media or people who are talking, whatever, right? I would be immediately going like, oh man, I messed that up, right? right. And so I was like, oh, I was already setting myself up for failure be just because the attitude was already off, but also the exercise, the execution of that attitude was already off, Right. Right. So now I go like, yeah, pro- you know, whenever I draw, I'm all like, I'm having fun doing this drawing. <laughs> right. And I, I'd, I'd say uh, it's a, it's a manageable percentage. Let's say like seventy percent of the time, people can tell that I'm having fun. You know, no doubt. Yeah. And then it, and then it ends up taking care of itself financially anyway. You know. Yes. That that took me a really, really, really long time to understand. Sure. But I think and it's, beca- it's because everyone is in a different place um, when it comes to their journey as an artist, right? right? You get, we were talking earlier, you get out of college, you're under duress with debt, right? And now you're doing everything that you can to make up for that debt, right? You right. don't have the luxury of going like, I'll just draw whatever the hell I want, you know? Right, right. You don't have that luxury. But to, to, to Rod's point, right? Rod was saying yeah. like, dude, I'm drawing for myself. You know, I'm learning so much. I, I'm, I, I'm still doing my job as a full-time artist for, for Marvel. Uh-huh. But right now I'm having so much fun. And it just, it just shows in the stuff that he posts. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. I totally agree with you. Definitely. All right. So let me see where everyone's at here. Uh, I'm going to hit stop in a minute here. It seems like the... We've done our time, but Rod, let me see, uh, speak so we can talk to us about where you are with your cap. Okay, so uh, you guys, you're seeing the the Captain America as I mm-hmm. I'm speaking. Okay, so now uh, that the 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 painting is almost dry, I'm adding some. Uh, light with my this right yeah and uh and the uh, uh, put more detail detail the the drawing and with the the wise then i'm going to come back with some uh coloring for 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 the shadows what uh i'm not sure if i go with uh uh Cool. The uh, this side, cool shadows, cool shadows, and uh, warm uh, uh, lightning, lighting uh, behind the, the the Captain America face. So I'm I'm still deciding, but I I don't know. I'm, I'm I don't know if I want a morning sh- uh, light. Or a uh, sunrise light. That, I think that's what I'm trying to decide. Okay. Okay. And Eric, where are you on yours? Oh, I I I chose a subject matter that was uh, I don't care about. I don't care about Captain Marvel. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to do this light transition from her thigh. Right, that's a harsh shadow that's cutting across her um, right. her thigh that's in the foreground. And I wanted to do that light transition from like, oh, there's something off scene is casting that shadow and what I would do with that blue, right? right. But still communicate the fact that there's a sheen on that thigh once it drops into shadow, right? Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a topic. Um, 
so now I'm trying to think about like, okay, so now that everything is being hit by that shadow, do I actively desaturate it, which Copics are just notoriously known for having 100% saturation all the time. Right, right, right. And now I have to mix in another color, which is probably going to be like a duller warm gray into her boot so that it doesn't register as this red that it's coming off right now. Even, even as a shadow color right now, it's still too saturated, you know? Right. Um, and short of going to brown a, paper to help desaturate the Copics. No, it's because I want to emphasize the pencils when I come back in and highlight everything. Okay. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's my experiment this morning is how to do this red so that it's not Copic red saturated. Right. Right. That's awesome. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you, fellas, for this. I found this yeah, to be a man. very engaging and interesting conversation. One that felt very uh, true to the spirit of this, the history of this podcast, which I have not, I don't think like the, I've been doing a lot of these more in-depth talks, like personal talks, even if we're talking about art and stuff, but there was a lot of, personal stuff. So I was excited to get back to that. So thank you both for, for going there with me. Thank Thanks for having me. He's the guy. Is, yeah, no, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I yeah. hope you, you invite me again. Oh, definitely. Yeah, this was great. We'll do it again for sure. For sure. So I'm going to sign off. Thank you, fellas. And uh, thank you all for listening. Yeah, man. <laughs> This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Comics. Hip hop. Life. 